Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and another episode of the Jesse Grant Show. So, the documentary is coming out, House of Hammer. Now, this is about the whole Hammer family, not just Army Hammer, but it's also working as an Army Hammer expose, as you will, about all the allegations that came out about, obviously, him being a cannibal and abusing these women. The trailer's dropped. It's a four-minute trailer, which is pretty damn long for a trailer. When I went to click it, I was like, uh, this is a bit long. I watched it. I quite like the trailer some bits, and I'm actually intrigued to watch this film. More so about learning about the Hammer family, which is a crazy family. If you don't know, they are a billionaire sort of like oil tycoon family, um, big in the finance world, just have a lot of money and a lot of power and influence. And through that has been a lot of crazy stories with murder cases and this all with his grandfather and people like that within his family. So now that Army Hammer is facing allegations of his own, it's getting even more interesting. So it's breaking down that and they actually have one member from the family speaking out against the Hammer family. And while I do have to say it's important to note that there could be a reason she's the only one speaking. This type of stuff usually happens in documentaries when someone is speaking out against someone. Sometimes you can find somewhere down the line they had a falling out. So maybe she was cut off from money or something and that's the reason why she's speaking out against them. If... That stuff can happen. While I don't know, I'm not saying that's a fact. I'm just saying that stuff can happen. So everything you see in this documentary, you have to take with a grain of salt. And that's what I'm trying to get into in this video. So I know that this documentary is going to come out much like a Michael Jackson Neverland documentary. A lot of people will watch this and go, oh my God, he did these things. He sexually abused the, these women. And I think it's important to not say he did it. And to not say he didn't do it either, because that hasn't been proven in the legal justice system. So far, so far, nothing has been proven against him. He hasn't had to pay any money. He hasn't been arrested. So therefore, he's innocent. In the eyes of the law, in the eyes of the way we've uh, constructed democracy and constructed the world we live in, he should be called innocent. Now... That's not to discredit these people's allegations, but that's where I want to get into with this documentary. And the key thing is that it is a documentary. So documentaries don't make a lot of money. So they have to try and take an angle which is going to maximize profits. And if you can take an angle which is more provocative, more controversial, um, really accusing him of doing this stuff and, and showing hard evidence and proof, then more people are going to watch it than if you were actually, you know, real about the whole thing. Like, hey, they said this, but they can't prove this. Less people care about that. They want to see and go, oh my God, Army Hammer is a sick freak. He did this and this. And so far, all we know is that he likes some kinky shit. Like that's, that's kind of all we know about this whole cannibalistic thing. And I'm not, I stress, I am not discrediting what they're saying. I am for anyone coming out of an abusive relationship or accusing someone of abuse. I will never shut that down because, well, that's just a really bad thing to do because if they actually went through that abuse, like... They've gone through enough trauma. They don't need other people, especially idiots like me on the internet, uh, accusing them of lying, right, and abusing them further. So I am not siding with Army Hammer. I'm not siding with the abusers either. I'm just playing in the middle, and I'm just telling you how it is with my take on the situation. Now, back to this being a documentary. Like I said, documentaries notoriously do not make a lot of money. And I know this from my own father, who actually, he's a journalist, and he made a documentary here in Australia. This documentary is one of the most successful documentaries financially in Australian history, and it made about $2 million in the box office. So the fact that a documentary can only make $2 million and be one of the most successful financially just goes to show how little money you make in documentaries and why they will be taking whatever steps necessary to maximize profits. And just like HBO did with Michael Jackson's Neverland documentary, uh, accusation documentary, they took some creative liberties and they sort of planted a picture which wasn't entirely accurate. And that's what I think could be happening with this. I don't know. It's not out yet. I can't say for sure. But there were just certain moments in the trailer which made me think, okay, this isn't quite accurate. There's one particular bit where the interviewer asks them, can you take out your phone? 
And she goes, sure, right? She pulls out her phone to get up the direct messages with Army Hammer. Now, if it had kept the camera on the phone the whole time, while she opened Instagram, went to Army Hammer's account, clicked messages, I would believe it, right? That can still be forged, but I would probably believe it. But that's not the case. She pulls out her phone and then it cuts and it cuts to a direct screen of a a screenshot of a message. And it's like, okay, so that could be edited, right? Like (laughs) that you didn't, we didn't see you open Instagram, go straight to the message and see it. That could easily be edited. And then it plays a voice message, but the voice message plays with no previous messages before it or after it. So you don't know what the context of this voice message is. And when it's taken on its own, him saying, you know, I want to, um, I want to bite you down your neck and I want to do this and this, like, we don't even know what the context of this was. Maybe this person was into this sort of role play and played along and realized they can make money out of it. Once again, I'm not accusing them. I'm just breaking down other scenarios of why this could be occurring. So with that being said, there are also some really good bits in the documentary. I like the the way that they're also explaining the whole family and explaining how that trauma can impact someone and how that genetic disposition could actually result in him being this way and having these weird sexual fetishes and maybe doing it to them against their will. We don't know any of this, but I like the way that they're sort of breaking it down in a scientific manner. So there are good bits and there are also bad bits that you have to watch out for, and especially in documentary storytelling, they can play, you know, moody music, and that all impacts the way you view the situation. So it's not a fact, it's not a photograph, it's an artwork, right? It's telling their truth rather than telling the facts. That's what I wanted to say about the documentary, and that's what I take from a lot of these expose-esque documentaries. Now, let me know your opinions on it. Have you guys seen the trailer? What are you expecting to come from it? And do you think anything will happen with this whole situation with Army Hammer? Because I'm yet to see anything out of the court system. I think so far he sort of dodged it, like they haven't ruled anything. So maybe it is all false, but they're making money off it. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. All the support really means the world to me. And I'll see you guys on my next video.